This video is for stoichiometry worksheet number two. I want to work out the even problems. The odd answers are posted online right now, so you can check those to make sure that you're doing things correctly. But again, as always, use the information that's provided to you as a guide to assist you, not as a means to get out of doing your homework. So let's look at question number two. Question number two asks you to calculate the number of grams of potassium chloride that will be formed by the decomposition of 6.45 grams of potassium chlorate. So again, we're reading the question, make sure you know what the reactants are, what the products are. So the number of grams of potassium chloride that will be formed by the decomposition of potassium chlorate. So in this case, we are decomposing potassium chlorate. And it also says that we are decomposing or that potassium chloride is formed. Now, I did not mention in this question, but hopefully you would recognize that I see potassium on both sides, I see chlorine on both sides, but I don't see an oxygen. So oxygen is also a product in this reaction. So we'll always make sure that the conservation of mass is in play here. Now, before we go through step one, let's write down what we know. So we know we have 6.45 grams of potassium chlorate. So 6.45 grams of potassium chlorate. And the question wants to know, calculate the number of grams of potassium chlorate. So we're looking for the number of grams in that. So once we have that, let's look at our balanced equation. Or actually, let's balance it. So we have three oxygens here, two there. I'm going to need a three there and a two here. So now my oxygens are balanced. I have two potassium and two chlorines. So let's put a two there. So now my equation is balanced. So once I have that, now I don't need to see the question anymore. So step one, write a balanced equation. Step two, take what's given. In this case, we have 6.45 grams of potassium chlorate, and I need to change that into moles. So step two is to convert what's given into moles. So I want to find out, I want to get rid of the grams of potassium chlorate, convert that into moles of potassium chlorate. So I have one potassium, 39.45, I'm sorry, 39.1, my bad, grams, plus the chlorine, which is 35.45, and three oxygens. And all of that equals 122, 0.55 grams. Okay. So again, I'm just doing that to get a quick, quick reference here. All right. So this is all step two, taking what's given, converting it into moles. Um, and then we want to get rid of the moles of the potassium chlorate. So we're going to put moles of potassium chlorate down here. And we are looking for grams of potassium chloride. So I need to convert this to moles of potassium chloride. So step three is use the mole ratio. Let's get rid of the unit that we started with to get the moles of what we're looking for. So from the balanced equation, we have a 2 and a 2 here. All right. And then the last step is step 4, convert to the desired units. So one mole of potassium chloride has a molar mass of 39.1 plus 35.45 grams. Which, let's get a number for that, so 74.55 grams. Okay. So now that I have that information, let's calculate. And that gives me 3.92 grams. And that is of the potassium chloride. Number four. For this reaction, answer the questions below for the reaction given, and it's already balanced for you, which is nice, so, but I still want to rewrite it just so that we can still see everything here. So we have two HCLs, and that forms zinc chloride and hydrogen. Okay, so the balanced equation was given to you. Um, let's write down what we know. So the question asks, how many moles of hydrogen chloride are needed to completely react with 12.35 grams of zinc? So we're looking for how many moles of hydrogen chloride 
if we had 12.35 grams of zinc. So again, step one, write a balanced equation. Already finished for you, which was kind of me. Um, we want to start with what we know. So we have 12.35 grams of zinc. Let's convert that into moles. Zinc has a molar mass of 65.39 grams. So that again is all step two. Step three, we want to get rid of our moles of zinc and go to moles of HCl. So from the balanced equation, we have one zinc, two hydrochlorics. So we'll go one zinc, two hydrochlorics. And the question is looking for moles, so we can stop at that point right there and figure out how many we have there. And this is giving me point three, we'll say seven seven, actually seven eight moles of HCl. Okay, so again, step one, write a balanced equation. Step two, start with what you know, convert it into moles. So now we have moles of zinc at this point. We want to get rid of our moles of zinc, so plug it into the mole okay. ratio. Part B. Part B is asking what volume of a three molar hydrochloric acid is required to react with the 12.35 grams of zinc. Now again, if you know the volume and you know the molarity, we always start with the volume. But if this question is asking for the volume. So since it's asking for the volume, what we're going to do is we're going to save this for last. Okay? Since we don't know anything about the volume and it gave us some molarity, we need something to start with. For step two, we've got to be able to change what's given into moles. This is not enough to change into moles. So we got to start with the stuff that we know will change into moles. So the 12.35 grams of zinc is what we're going to start with. Now, what's nice is this is what we have up here. So we can use this same equation here. So let's see if I can move a lot so of this very down. similar. And then what we're going to do, get it back to normal size here. And now we're going to answer the question. So we started with the 12.35 grams, converted those grams into moles, got rid of the moles of the zinc. Now we have moles of hydrochloric. However, at this point, the question wants to know what is the volume? Well, recall that when you look at molarity, molarity is moles of your solute over liters of your solvent. So in this case, we're given, what is it, a three molar solution? A three molar solution. So if I have a 3.0 molar solution, what that's telling me is I have three moles of the solution as long as I have a liter of it. Or every liter that of the solution I have, there's three moles of that substance. Now what's really cool about doing dimensional analysis is if this is not the unit that we're looking for, and again, this represents three molar for our HCl. If this is not the unit that we're looking for, we're going to move that unit diagonally. So we'll put moles of HCl down here. Now, we need to use the molarity at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to invert this guy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this over here, and we're going to flip the three moles. We're going to keep the number three with that value. So we have three moles of hydrochloric acid, or HCl, and we'll place that over a liter. So what I've done is I've actually taken this and flipped it. Now notice that the three stays with the unit moles. And it's all in alignment here. So if we were to stop right here, what's going to happen is our units, grams are going to cancel out, moles of zinc are going to cancel out, moles of HCl are going to cancel out. We're left with our volume. And in this question, it's asking for the volume, but it doesn't specify what unit. So if you left it in liters, that's fine. Normally, we would go one more step and change this into milliliters. If that were the case, then remember that for every one liter, there's a thousand milliliters, but I'm not asking for that. But if I were, that's a step that you would use. So we'll leave it at, at liters here. So the most important thing about this question is my molarity, again, is moles over liters. And since I can't start with that because I don't know the volume and the molarity, I have to end with that. 
but that's giving me the unit that I'm looking for, especially in this question, which is asking for what is the volume. So invert it. Take your value, your three molar, put the three moles on the bottom, put your liters on top, and again, keep in mind that this is still equal to each other. In other words, for every liter of solution, I have three moles of HCl in there. So that is still equivalent and it's legal to use. But if you know the volume and the molarity, then we start with the volume and we multiply by this so we can cancel out the volume. All right, so let's find out what this value is actually equal to. So my volume is 0.126 liters. And if we were to change that to milliliters, we would multiply that by 1,000. And in that case, it would be 126 milliliters. But I wasn't asking for milliliters in that case. Number six. Number six asks, how many moles of lead 2 nitrate will be needed to react with sodium chromate to produce 4.62 kilograms of lead 2 chromate? We got a lot going on here, guys. So it wants to know how many moles of lead 2 nitrate will be needed to react. So to react means that this is on the left side. So we have lead 2 nitrate. So let's go ahead and write lead nitrate here for a second to react with sodium chromate. Sodium and chromate, again, is one of your 10 polyatomics, CrO4, and we'll get to the charges here in a second, uh, to produce lead 2 chromate. Now, before I even wrote the lead 2 chromate here, let's kind of move that out of the way just for a second. What kind of reaction do we have here? We have a metal with a non-metal reacting with another metal with a non-metal. Very good. It's a double replacement reaction. What I did not give you was the other product. I would expect you to look at this and say, oh, okay, well, the lead and the chromate are together, so now the sodium and the nitrate need to be together. And that would be good thinking. Okay? So now let's look at charges and balance this out, because we don't want to put try to balance the number of atoms if we don't the charges aren't right. So lead's a plus two, nitrate's a negative one. So that means we need two nitrates. Okay? Done with that. Okay. Sodium has a plus one charge. Chromate's a minus two. That means I need two sodiums. So those charges are balanced. Lead has a plus two. Chromate's a minus two. That one's balanced as written. Okay. And then sodium's plus one. Nitrate's plus, minus one. So now everything's balanced. So we needed two nitrates and two sodiums based on what we had before. All right, so now let's balance the number of atoms on both sides. Uh, really, there's no really ugly one here, but let's start with the nitrate. That'll probably be the easiest one. We have two nitrates there. I can move you over. So I'm going to put a two there. So now I have two sodiums and two nitrates. I have two nitrates. How many sodiums do I have? Two. So my charges are balanced. Let's balance, and my number of atoms are balanced as well. So let's write down what we know. We have 4.62 kilograms kilograms of lead chromate. So we have 4.62 kilograms of lead chromate, and it wants to know how many moles of lead nitrate. Okay. So once we have that, we don't even need to see the question anymore. All right. So here we go. Start with what you know. In this case, we know we have 4. 6.2 kilograms of our lead 2 chromate. So we need to convert the kilograms into grams. So kilograms go down there. Grams are right there. Kilograms are bigger than grams. There's a thousand of those. Okay, so now we need to convert the grams to moles. So one mole of lead 2 chromate. And lead has a molar mass of 207 grams plus chromate's 52 and four oxygens. Okay. Now let's get a molar mass so of that. 323.2 grams is our molar mass for our lead chromate. All right, so now this is all step two. Step one, write a balanced equation. Step two, change what was given, kilograms into grams, grams into moles, in the moles. Now we're gonna get rid of moles of lead chromate. 
and we're going to go to moles of what we're looking for, in this case, lead nitrate. And again, from our balanced equation, we have a 1 there and a 1 there. And let's solve for what that is. And I get 14.3 moles of lead nitrate. So that one wasn't too bad, just a little bit of finding some numbers that we haven't been using in a while. Number eight, for this reaction, answer the following questions. Here I'm giving you a balanced equation again. So part A asks, how many grams of copper are required to displace 9.35 grams of silver from the solution of silver nitrate? Okay, so let's rewrite this equation. So we have copper, oops, yeah, plus two silver nitrates. And again, I'm just doing this. It's a good habit for it. Copper nitrate and two silvers. Okay, so let's write what we know. Uh, 9.35 grams of silver. 9.35 grams of silver. And it wants to know how many grams of copper. Okay. And don't get hung up over the wording, to displace. Just know that it's 9.35 grams of silver and how many grams of copper. Okay. So once we have that, we don't need to look at the balanced equation again. We're ready to go. So start with your 9.35 grams of silver. So convert your grams into moles. So 107.7 grams. So now we're going to use the mole ratio. We're going to get rid of moles of silver and go to moles of copper. And from our balanced equation, so we have a 2 there and a 1 here. So 2, 1. And it wants to know how many grams. So one mole of, one mole of copper, copper is 63.55 grams, and whatever that equals. So let's find that 2.75 grams of copper. All right, part B. If 5.5 grams of silver are produced in the above reaction, how many moles of copper were reacted? So let's go ahead and get that equation back here. We have the same balanced equation, but this time it's telling us we have 5.5 grams of silver, and it wants to know how many moles of copper were reacted. Okay, So very similar to the last question that we just worked out, uh, except we're going to start with the 5.5 here. All right, so we start with our 5.5 grams of silver. And again, convert that into moles, so one mole of silver, which you had in the previous problem, was 107.97 grams. And in this case, we're just going to use the mole ratio, two moles of silver, compared to one mole of copper. But the question wants to know how many moles of copper, so that's where we'll stop. Let's calculate that value. So the calculator says point. 0 0.0255 moles of copper would be produced in that reaction. All right, so again, regardless of the type of question that's being asked, some of these are a little more of a review of like the first day that we did stoichiometry and then we threw in similarity. Make sure that you're reading the question. Make sure that you know what the question's asking, what the question's giving you. And then hopefully you can construct this whole thing remembering that the four steps that you're going to use, write a balanced equation, change what's given into moles. Step three, use the mole ratio to get rid of that which you were given at the beginning. And then step four, uh, convert to the desired units.